meet the UK's luckiest dogs. They have their own nanny, gourmet meals on tap, and devoted ex-glamour model Jilly Johnson for a mistress. Life couldn't be sweeter, or could it? One of the Danes is not so great. His boisterous behaviour is becoming dangerous. Let loose in the village, he's a public menace. Enter top dog trainer Victoria Stillwell. What will she make of Dylan, the villain? Jilly and her dogs are terrorising the village. No, Dylan! Oh. No! No, no, no! Former glamour model Jilly Johnson and her husband Ashley Brodin live in the home counties with their three Great Danes, Harley, Digby and Dylan. They enjoy the high life and ensure the boys get the five-star treatment too. You're all mummy's boy. <laughs> yes, you are. They love their lives and I love being with them. I love them to give them the best. They have their own bedroom, their own 4x4. Four four, nanny? And their own nanny, who lovingly prepares all their meals. Nanny's speciality is the chicken soup and noodles. They love that. They behave like a naughty children, not like a dogs. <laughs> Jilly's whole life is ruled by those dogs. There isn't any question about it. Mm, a bit over the top in my dogs. But I think I'm reasonably balanced. I am quite balanced to the point um, I try to remember that they are dogs. I do. Okay. For three years, life with Digby and Harley was just grand. Then Dylan arrived and everything changed. No. Stop it. No. Don't jump. No. I haven't trained Dylan that well because he was quite poorly as a puppy. Consequently, he's been allowed to get away with murder. <laughs> Dylan rules the house, uh, closely followed by Digby and Harley. Do you want to say, like, oh, it's always Dylan. The dynamics uh, changed dramatically. Let's go, Whoopi. We suddenly had the pack. We've rather become like prisoners in our own home because um, we just can't take them out anywhere with their people around. Dylan's sheltered life means he hasn't had the chance to meet other dogs. His exposure to the outside world has been limited. So on the rare occasions he does leave the premises, he goes completely berserk, and the others join in. See, people say, you should have those ferocious dogs locked away. They're frenzied, aren't they? Yeah, and then nobody can get near the car. They think they own the village. With over 30 stone of Great Dane to hold on to, visits to the local shops have become fraught with fear and embarrassment. Stop it! Sorry. Danger on the right, Jilly. Potential danger coming up, which is a trolley on wheels. <laughs> Bicycles, cement we mixes. Have I'm postman on bikes. <laughs> attack, attack, attack. <laughs> there you are. There you go. There's two kids there. Look. There's two children there. Dylan! Dylan! <laughs> he's only a puppy. God, he's unbearable. Stop that! Hey, 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 hey! Sorry, 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 no, no! Come Go. on! And that's why we can't go shopping. We just cannot bring them out. It's just awful. I'm just yeah, in shreds, yeah, and I don't yeah. mean um, my clothes. You know, my nerves yeah. are in shreds. I can't, yeah. I can't deal with this anymore. This is it. This is our yeah. final outing. Yeah. If anyone can turn Dylan's dangerous behaviour around, it's Victoria Stillwell. Great Danes are beautiful dogs, but they're giants. All too often, people underestimate how powerful these dogs can be, so taking on not one, not two, but three of them is asking for trouble. Despite their name, Great Danes aren't Danish. In fact, they originate from Germany. In the early 19th century, German aristocracy used them for hunting wild boar, stags and wolves. Their sheer size puts a tremendous amount of stress on their small hearts, frequently resulting in serious health problems and a short lifespan. Danes in particular crave affection and attention. They love physical contact. And Victoria's about to see just how demanding Jilly's three hulking hounds can be. Now sit down and be a good boy, come on. 
the other two dogs are very disciplined and right. obedient yeah. and right. the, the kind of I'm very proud to have them as my dog. Right. But Dylan has changed the dynamics. Oh, oh. look. At oh this. my I've got so, my shoulder. You can't sit on my shoulder. Do really they like... always sit on you like this? Yeah. Yes. It's, it is a Dane thing. They sit on the sofa with us or they sit on our laps. The other dogs just sit their bottoms on the sofa. Yeah. But Dylan, in fact, has to sit his whole self on the sofa. We call him the terrorist. Dylan, come and sit with Victoria. Come here, darling. There oh, you are. Oh, 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 He's wearing that colour scarf for a reason. Be uh, red because... It's the devil's colour. Because it's the devil's colour. Dylan? Yeah. He's already got no, a whiff. he already knows. Something's up. Things are about to, to change. change. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Jilly takes Victoria outside to show her how rough Dylan's play is becoming. No, Dylan. Obviously. Ow! Whoa. No! He's not responding no. to your discipline at all. <laughs> no, Dylan. No! So why is it that Dylan feels the need to mouth me and not you? Dogs don't mouth leaders. I'm giving off the vibe of don't you dare. Next, Victoria's treated to a trip to the local shops. Oh. This is it. This is it. It didn't ever happen with the two big boys. Harley and Digby oh, would sit. Uh, do they get in the front too? Uh, this is uh, Dylan being naughty. OK, Dylan, Dylan that's... <laughs> See, this is dangerous. That's get back! very dangerous. So now we're just going through the village. <laughs> It's absolute madness. I can't drive it. Shut up! Oops, there's barking at the policeman. Barking at the policeman. Oh, isn't it lovely when it's silent? It doesn't last long there, does it? Barking I have no mad. drum left! Barking mad. If you're going to have your dogs in the back of the car, you have a grill. I don't care whether it's a new car or not. That is irresponsible and very, very dangerous. What you got? A chew. Jilly is too scared to go back to the village with Dylan, but Victoria needs to see his dangerous behaviour firsthand. So she's roped in a neighbour and a plucky pooch for a meeting on private land. <laughs> No, <laughs> Part of this is frustration at not being able to go greet the other dog. Part of it is the fact that he hasn't had socialisation with other dogs, so that they're maybe slightly fearful for him. Victoria needs to concentrate on the behaviour of the main aggressor, so it's time for Dylan, the villain, to go it alone. <laughs> Take him back now. Sorry. Hardly heal. All right. Okay. Okay. So he's using, he's using the same greeting behaviour, greeting these dogs as he is yes. greeting that yes, dog. Yes. Yes. Okay. Which it's makes excitement. me think this is more excitement. Yeah. This is what I feel, but I'm too nervous to yes, take the risk. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, good boy. Good boy. Back at home, Victoria gets to see just how passionate Jilly is about her dogs. Surely you've snogged your dog. I have never snogged my dog. You're the maestro of training dogs. I'm the queen of snog. It's kisses and fine cuisine on tap. Explain this food to me. Generally, this is what the dogs have. They have fish, we've got vegetables, organic mixed pasta, with chicken. We've got rice over here okay. and we've got 11 cc here. 11 cc? My grandmother used to feed yeah. me 11 cc. I've never heard of 11 cc for dogs. Yeah. Victoria's seen enough. It's time to lay it on the line. <laughs> I've got these little <laughs> photographs here. <laughs> They're all up there. The lords of the manor. <laughs> And Ashley, you're here. Yes. Because they do listen to you. Yeah. But not always. And I'm afraid, Jilly, you're on the third <laughs> step. I, I can see this. <laughs> now, what I want to make you is 
I want you to be here. Okay. Both of you. See, look. He'll, he'll He's growl. looking at the new order. Yeah. Think he might no, give no, it a, no, his no, seal no. of approval. Yeah. No, no. Good boy. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> the headliner here. Dylan is not a bad dog. He's just a big puppy that has been given no direction. Also, he didn't receive that incredibly important socialization. If you don't expose that dog to a hundred different sights, a hundred different sounds, sights, pleasure, everything, you're going to have a dog that has no doggy etiquette, has no social skills. Yeah, no, I, you have I to have... face it. I mean, perhaps face it. A little late. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah. I know I'm the main offender. You, you, I, yes. I confess. Well, absolutely, yeah. of course yeah. you are. Villain. Dylan the villain really isn't a villain at all. He's just an out of control puppy with no formal education. In order for this to change, I need to teach Jilly to become more of an educator, to become more of a leader. The next day, training begins in earnest. Victoria wants to get to grips with Dylan's mouthing problem. When one puppy bites another puppy too hard during play, the puppy that's been bitten will squeal as if to say, ouch, get off, you're hurting me. So when he comes to mouth you, you go as if to say, ouch, that hurts. It's got to be loud, short and sharp. <coughs> that's perfect. Finally, I've met someone who can squeal as well as I can. <laughs> I'm a squealer. <laughs> when he stops, that's a good thing we want him to do. You cross your arms and you turn away. Biting stops play. Yelp. <laughs> Fold your arms. Good. That's it. Don't give him any attention. Be boring. Now turn away from him. That's it. Turn away. Don't give him any attention. Just walk away very slowly. Good. See, he's not interested at all because you're boring. Now you are showing signs of being a leader. OK. Oh, he's all grown up. Next on Victoria's agenda is putting an end to the ear-splitting chaotic car journeys. Whoa. What's this? We've blocked off the windows and we've also put a grate in the front there that's blocked out. I want to try a drive through through the village with this blackout. Right. If they've been good, then I'm going to allow them to see a little bit in front of them. See no sound whatsoever because it's the sight that's stimulating them. This is no fun at all. But now they're pretty relaxed. I'm going to give them the reward of opening the curtain here, OK? Fair. That's good boy. <laughs> no. Wait for a couple of seconds, and the curtain goes back again. <laughs> Any noise from the back and its curtains. Good boy. Good boy. Really, really good. Half an hour later, the dogs seem to have got the message and all the blackout can be removed. Whoops. OK, now people crossing the road. No reaction. Good boy. I mean, this is the ultimate test. Good boy. Very good, Jilly. Like the way he prays. It's brilliant. Good boy. Yes, good boy. Victoria's next challenge is more difficult. She wants Dylan to meet new dogs without him or his owners losing control. But with each dog weighing over 10 stone, one of their basic problems is simply not having the strength to hold them back. Victoria believes a head collar will make a big difference. Now, I've got control of his head. He can't pull me. I mean... But he just hates it. Look at him. Yeah, well, you have to give a dog time to become accustomed to it. Once Dylan's used to the new head collar, it's time to meet a dog. But Victoria wants Jilly to keep her distance. We're not training with Jilly because she gets more stressed. And I don't want her stress being transferred to the dog. 
I'm frightened for him because he hasn't really met another dog and that's all my own fault. So this is it. Let's hope it's his first friend. He just hates it. As soon as Dylan spots the other dog, he begins to bray and whine with excitement. It's really important that we keep the other dog as safe as possible. Yes, yes, yes. And so we're going to use this muzzle just for safety. OK. Victoria's chosen a well-designed and comfortable muzzle. Dylan, like most dogs, will get used to it very quickly. Okay. Let's start. What I'm going to do is that each time he really brays hard, yeah. I will either turn around and walk in the other direction yeah. or I'll stop. When Dylan continues to lunge at the unfamiliar dog, Victoria decides to change tactics. Now we're following. Yeah. And the reason why we're doing this is that it's less confrontational than a head-to-head -head greeting. Oh, I see. Okay. And I don't care if we have to go around this field 500 times. Yeah. I want him to be relaxed before we do the final greeting. <laughs> Lunging, walk in the other direction. Go back. Walking in the other direction. He's lunging. Go back. After 20 minutes of hard work, there's a breakthrough. And for the first time in his life, Dylan gets close to another dog without going ballistic. Say, I just say hello to the puppy. Say hello to the puppy. Oh, it's OK. Hello. I'm going to take this muzzle off right now. Let's give it to you, Ashley. Now let's just walk together. I cannot believe that um, Dylan's walking with another dog. It's a sort of barrier broken through almost. Yes. Yeah. Oh, look. They're walking together. You did not do boy. well. Hello, darling. Look. Look, a real friend. Both dog and owner are growing in confidence. There's no time to lose. They head out to a public footpath and immediately come across another dog. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, he's a big boy, isn't he? <laughs> Just, OK, let's walk forward. Good, Jilly. I know it's a lot, but that good was good. Victoria's lined up another new dog for Dylan to meet. Now this greeting is going to be much more confrontational because it's two dogs greeting face to face. Right. OK. It's important to remain calm. OK. Um, if he brays, just turn in the other direction. OK. <coughs> turn around. Excellent. <coughs> So he's getting very excited now, but he's not praying too much. Good boy. Just let him go up and say hello. Good boy. Good boy. Let him go up and say hello. Yes. Say hello. Yes. Very good. Comparison to previous training, he did get excited, but you know, look how he is. I think it would be good because they both want to play and it's annoying for them both to be on the lead. Could we uh, let them off? Look, be gentle, Dylan. You're a good boy. Oh, oh, it's love at first sight. He's like, oh, come on, chase me, chase me. She's a proper <laughs> female. <gasps> With Dylan adapting well, Victoria steps it up a notch. The biggest challenge is going to be in the village. Oh. So what I've got is I've got a couple of things you might encounter when you're there. Joggers. Got the whole team. Hello. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Say hello. Yeah, good boy. No lunging, good boy. He's interested in the cyclist. Hold on. Good boy. <gasps> Great things to chase. Great. He fun. doesn't know what they are. Good boy. Ah, good, good boy. boy. If you keep this up, you meet a dog a day, you carry on with this desensitization, I have high hopes that you'll make it to the village. With Jilly confident and Dylan Karma, Victoria leaves them to carry on the hard work with strict instructions to meet a dog a day. 
Two weeks later, Victoria returns to see how Jilly and Ashley have been getting on without her. Hello. Hello, Hello. Hello boys. Hello. Well, okay. all right. Oh, where do I begin? He's definitely aware that there's no nonsense to be had. He's definitely aware that suddenly he has to do as he's told and he's not so much a puppy anymore. If I said to you, let's go to the village today and see <laughs> how it's been going, what would you yeah, say? God, uh, um, yeah. If we have to. <laughs> if you have been doing this meter dog a day, then mm. I do think the time is right to go back to the village and see how it's going. Right. Back to the scene of the crime. Yeah. This will be the first time they've gone back to the village since Jilly was dragged off her feet. Good boy. Got bicycles coming up. That's yeah, it, that's it. Just keep going. Good, Love. good boy, Jilly. Good, good boy. You good did boy. well there. We have push chairs now. Good boy. And we have a calm Dylan, look. <laughs> If your dog goes bonkers every time it meets another dog, remember, it's essential that from an early age your dog is introduced to as many sights, sounds and smells as possible, especially other dogs. If your dog does show aggression, either stop dead or turn and walk in the opposite direction. Remember, if you feel nervous, your dog will feel it too. Act confident and your dog will be confident. Two weeks ago, Dylan was dragging Jilly off her feet in the village. Now it's a completely different story. They have made great progress. Dylan is a much calmer dog. Jilly is a confident owner and the village is happy. <laughs>